Hey folks, welcome to the show today. Glad you joined us here on Doc Talk today. Dr. Brian Lubers is going to join us and we're going to talk about diagnostics and how you can do that to solve issues within your herd or to diagnose disease. It's going to be a great show. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back after these messages. Brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're excited to have you here today and we're excited for our guest. Dr. Brian Lubers is here. Dr. Lubers is a clinical associate professor over in our diagnostic lab here at K-State, veterinary diagnostic lab at the College of Veterinary Medicine. And um, you head up our bacteriology section That's as correct. well. Yep. Yep. And so uh, Dr. Lubers is one of those people that is a rare find in academia. He has actually been out in practice, has spent time on in the, in the trenches with animal health on cattle and, and all different types of species. and. And so we're lucky to have him here at K-State. So Brian, let's talk a little bit about diagnostics. Cause I, I mean, the first thing is we just gotta get people to understand why they need to be sending samples in. Mm -hmm. And it and isn't for just our health. No, no. <laughs> Although I like to get samples in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what we see in the diagnostic lab, I mean, we see a wide variety of situations for, for why people would send in diagnostic samples in general. Um, a veterinarian may send in a sample uh, really just to confirm what they already think, right? So they've got kind of a, a pretty good suspicion of what disease process might be going on and we'll choose a few samples, we'll do the testing that they recommend and sure enough they were right, we confirm it. Um, sometimes there are some follow-up steps with that, so with uh, microbiology, which is what we do in my laboratory, uh, they may suspect that it's a, a Mannheimia or a Pastorella associated with BRD, and, and that diagnosis was absolutely confirmed with our testing. And then they may ask us to do some follow-up and look at, you know, test different antibiotics and see which one might be the, the, the optimal drug for treating that particular organism. Um, and the other end of the spectrum is, you know, we see cases where animals found dead, looking fine the day before, <laughs> really no suspicion that anything was wrong and and now it really becomes a hunt and a puzzle to figure out okay what was going on in that case and um, and really anything and everything in between Dan um, so yeah so that's kind of the reasons why veterinarians are, are doing diagnostics and and I think too even with the the climate that we live in today especially you know antibiotics and welfare and all of these issues are very at the forefront of what we do every day and diagnostics really play a role in supporting some of the decisions we make in the spirit of, of, of those issues particularly. Yeah, well, we, we, we can talk about some of those issues with welfare and sustainability and antibiotic usage, but man, there, there's sometimes people are stepping over dollars to pick up dimes by, by not doing diagnostics and understanding why the cows are open or, or mm -hmm things to that nature every day, aren't they? Sure, yeah, and, and we obviously see that and our encouragement to everyone is always, you know, if you're not sure, even if you're, you're kind of sure, but you think there's a, a role for diagnostic testing, just submit the samples. And then um, most of the people that work in the diagnostic lab here at Kansas State have some practice experience. We understand how it is out there in the real world and, you know, we're not running up huge bills for people. We're, we're really trying to narrow down and Sometimes with some of those cases, we start with a whole bunch of options and we just try to keep whittling it down and whittling it down until hopefully we get to an answer and something that really turns into a management decision where somebody does something differently to, to change the course of that disease. My dad used to say that it was easier for him as a veterinarian to sell 
a vaccine for a few thousand dollars than a diagnosis for a few dollars. And, and folks, when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about developing a relationship with the diagnostic lab. You're watching Doc Talk with Brian Lubers. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups, to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brian Lubers, who's a clinical associate professor. He's the head of our bacteriology section here at the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab at Kansas State University. He's seeing tons of cases and, and um, you know, we, we have the, the website here below that you can see if you want to contact the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab and you want to sub submit samples here to Kansas State. We have a great group of people uh, glad to help you out. Brian, talk me through now, like what are, you know, how do I come up with a question or how do I, I mean, I, you, you came up with the obvious one, I got a dead cow, right? right? And I want to know what the heck happened. Sure. And, and so how do I, as a producer or veterinarian, how do I start to, you know, get my decision tree and, and or what do I need to do? Well, and in some cases you don't need to do anything other than just write that on the submission form and we actually have a box that says pathologist discretion so um, it's it's really really important and, and again as we kind of balance that being fiscally responsible with your dollars and trying to get the right answer for that particular case that history is really important Dan so knowing you know what's been going on in the herd how many animals affected how many animals in the herd is this a new problem an ongoing problem uh, all of those things, any sort of, anything you can tell us about the management of those animals, what you've noticed particularly with this disease or disease outbreak, uh, any vaccination history, treatment history, pictures are great. You know, we live in an age now, everybody's got a camera in their pocket and not just pictures of the, we, we keep saying dead, but oftentimes these aren't dead animals, right? They might be sick. Um, but pictures of the animal, pictures of its environment. Um, obviously, if, if the veterinarian or yourself does a necropsy, those pictures are, you know, all of those things are really, really valuable. Oftentimes, pictures tell us what a thousand words won't write. So, so those things are really useful. Um, in those, in, and I want to be fair, the cases where it's absolutely really don't know it, what's going on at all, those are really a small percentage of our cases. Most of the time it's, we have a suspicion of at least to a system, right? It's a, it's a, it's a GI stomach digestive disease or it's a respiratory disease in cattle. Uh, abortions are common around here in the spring. So all of the, so usually we have a system that we're working in, a, a body system, and that kind of guides our testing a little bit. And then from there, like I said, we, we generally will take kind of a a one or two tests at a time approach. We have some tests that are more screening tests, and then we have some tests that are more definitive tests. So we think it might be an IBR abortion storm. So we, we can do a PCR test or a virus isolation test, specifically looking for that agent. So it's important, get your veterinarian involved, Absolutely. let them help you uh, get the right pictures, the, the things that, because they kind of know what system it is, and they know what's going to help you as a pathologist or as a bacteriologist make a make a case and oftentimes they have a a working knowledge of that operation much longer than the individual case we get as a diagnostic person so you know they can give us a little more of the long-term history of that farm great folks we're going to take a break when we come back we'll talk about some of the samples and how we design what samples to be sent in with dr brian lubers 
from the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab here at Kansas State University. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at Corey at surecrop. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. I'm Tom Perrier. Our ranch is called Dale Banks Angus. Dale Banks is not a person, but it's a place. Uh, this ranch was started by my uh, great-grandfather, he came from Northwest England and his farm there was called Dale Banks and so he called his ranch here in the Flint Hills Dale Banks. The beef checkoff today has fulfilled a lot of needs that our industry has had over the years. Uh, we were very involved in trying to get the beef checkoff passed back in the 70s and early 80s because we saw the need then and the beef checkoff I think has fulfilled a lot of those needs. I think some of the, the biggest bonuses that we've gotten from the beef checkoff in the last 20 years have been twofold, both in the research uh, phase of the industry, one being the Beef Quality Assurance Program that showed us just how much money we could capture by simply doing things like moving the injection sites from the hip and, and rump of the animal up to the neck where we had less high-valued cuts. That drove millions of dollars into our industry. The other thing that our beef industry did about 15 years ago was uh, embark on new product development, things like the flat iron steak and things that used to get ground into hamburger and low, other low-valued cuts today are sold for a premium. And that too, just like the Beef Quality Assurance Program, has driven uh, huge dollars into our industry that we all get to share. Matt's a primary uh, driver behind the operation right now and uh, he's the sixth generation and his children will be the seventh generation. I hope our kids are better at telling our beef industry's story. I think the last several years the beef checkoff has shown us how to do that better. They've given us some tools to do that so we need to do a better job of telling the wonderful story that we have and I hope our kids can continue to do that. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with a friend and colleague, Dr. Brian Lubers. Um, Dr. Lubers is a clinical associate professor in the head of our bacteriology section here at the Diagnostic Lab at Kansas State University where we see thousands of cases. So um, Dr. Lubers, uh, one of the things that I always hated for myself was that I'd send something in and I'd get a note back saying, results inconclusive. <laughs> autolysis or you know something the sample wasn't good yeah and those are the reports we hate to send out too <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm sure <laughs> so, I've gotten too many of them because of myself okay but uh, help me out talk to us a little bit about the best samples and, and things to that nature sure and and the the best sample is always a little bit relative right so we talked about 
we, we want to formulate a question. We've, we've got a case scenario. We want to formulate a, a specific question. What are we trying to do with our diagnostic testing? And then once we have that, and, and again, sometimes that may be, we have no idea and we just have to start whittling things down. But like I said, oftentimes the majority of our cases were at least down to a system. And so we start targeting things that are commonly, but best samples a little bit relative and it depends on what kind of test you're doing. Um, and it depends on what question you're kind of answering. And you mentioned the website. The website is a fantastic resource. We, we have a, our test menu is on the website and you can scroll through that. And we always tell you what the recommended sample is, how to package that sample and how to ship that sample to us. Uh, just, and just as an illustration, so again, we work with bacteriology. And so the goal in my laboratory is to try to grow a live bacteria. And, and we do that uh, for several reasons. One is that's how we identify those bacteria. We'll do some further testing to tell you what bacteria it is. In order for us to test our antibiotic panel against that bacteria, we have to have an organism that's able to grow. And we get a fair number of requests for things like autogenous vaccines or sure. other, other things that people wanna do with those isolates and they have to be live isolates. And so, uh, as hardy as we think bacteria are, they're actually relatively sensitive to environmental temperatures and conditions. And so uh, the best sample for me is the one where the infection is, that's where we take it from. And then packaging and shipping is really important. So um, keeping those samples cool so that we don't get all the other bacteria that, you know, we work in environments outside. A lot of times those samples can get contaminated relatively easily. So cool temperatures help keep that down. Um, but if they get too warm or too cold, then we kill off the bacteria that we're trying to grow. So, you know, so it, it is a little bit of a, we got to find that happy medium. Um, and, and for us, again, some tests uh, for histopathology, for example, so that's a test where they're looking at the structure of tissues. Right. Those tissues are preserved in formalin. They can be shipped over a couple days if you'd like as, as fast as you want the results back. For bacteriology, we always recommend overnight. So really, you know, the best sample is, is again, case dependent. Always check the website, check with the lab. Different labs have different recommendations, but um, certainly there's a lot of guidance out there and we encourage people to use that. Perfect. Well, folks, um, lots of information and we have more information to come in our wrap up here. We'll talk about samples, testing, much more. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We're here with Dr. Brian Lubers from the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. Thanks for joining me today for Beringer Ingelheim's Cattle First. When we start to think about labels that are on bottles of antibiotics, it's extremely important that we follow them. The first thing that's on the label, what species is this indicated for? So it might be for cattle, for horses, for dogs, or cats. Once we understand the species that these products are labeled for, what's the indication? Bovine respiratory disease, uh, could it be for foot rot? There's a list of species, indications. After that, what's the dosage, what's the route of administration, and then what's the withdrawal time or the time in which it's safe to take an animal to slaughter from the time in which the animal was last treated until, until that animal was slaughtered. So, species, indication, dosage, route of administration, withdrawal. All of these are important components on a label, so make sure that you follow them and use antibiotics judiciously. Beringer Ingelheim's Cattle First. I'm Rexanne Struve, veterinarian in Western Iowa. I have a veterinary clinic and uh, started doing stem cell therapy on dogs in August of 2014. And after the first two dogs, after three weeks, I saw such dramatic results. I said, hey, I have arthritis, I have joints, really need this help. Where can I go to get this done? I had stem cell therapy done in November of 2014 on my finger joints, my hip, and the ball of my left foot, uh, all of which I'd had real severe problems with. Saw a pretty dramatic uh, improvement in a short amount of time. I would certainly recommend that somebody don't wait until I'm in the position that I was in with the d damage already done to my joints. I encourage veterinarians to use it for their animals, and I encourage anybody who sees this video, if you have need, get in contact with these people because this is a phenomenal place to have this done. 
Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. Tarwater Farm and Home is a 40-year-old local family-owned business. Clothing for work and play, seeds and feeds, boots, toys for the kids, and tools you'll need for around the house and farm. And a service department to keep them in top running order. It's a big store, so take some time to see what they have for your farm and home. Tarwater's everyday pricing is like others' sale prices. When you need it, they've got it. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook or Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Doc. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Brian Lubers. We're here at Kansas State University where Dr. Lubers is the head of our bacteriology section at the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory and sees a lot of samples and a lot of good samples, a lot of bad samples, but the one that you can't test is the one they don't send in, right? That's absolutely right, Dan. Yep. And so? So, so we talked a lot about those cases where you, you don't know what's going on or even the cases where you think you might know what's going on. It's not uncommon for us to get a a submission and so that that can be one sample or multiple samples but for us to get a submission where somebody was really suspicious let's say for instance they, they were fairly convinced it was BRD and we test the sample and we don't find anything and they didn't send us anything else so you know our, our recommendation is always when you're in any of those diagnostic situations we would prefer you send us a little bit of every type of tissue and, and again on the website we have recommended tissues for different disease processes, uh, complete necropsies, things like that. But we always, more is way, way better than less <laughs> because um, it, like you said, it's it's really hard to test something we didn't get. And especially when the, the thing that we thought was going on turns out not to be uh, some, a lot of times we think we miss diagnoses just because there's nothing to follow up with. I had an old boy tell me uh, we'll miss more by not looking than we will by not knowing. Yeah, that's, a, that's absolutely correct. And so, so make sure we do that. Um, what about tests? Once you get it in here, how do you kind of differentiate what tests run? Sure, it, and it depends on the case. So if, if we get a submission from a veterinarian and they're fairly convinced it's this disease and they're just trying to say yes or no, it isn't, uh, those tests generally go straight to that laboratory. So the veterinarian's already decided what tests they want. They go straight to the laboratory. The laboratory does the testing, end of story. If it's a more complicated case or a case where the veterinarian has asked the diagnostic lab for some input about what tests to do, then those go through a pathologist who's a specialist. Um, they work with you know, all kinds of different disease processes, lots of dead animals, some live submissions, and they, they'll selectively choose, you know, which, how do we want to progress through this investigation? Which tests do we do first? How do we follow up? And, and another thing that I think people miss the point, these, this is a regional service. These, these diagnostic labs, I mean, obviously there are international uh, samples submitted and all that, but you know, when, when you're in Texas or you're in Kansas or you're in Nebraska or whatever, we're seeing a lot of cases that are similar coming into a D-Lab. And so you, they may think it's something novel or new, but it's something you may have seen 30 or 40 cases of in the last two weeks. Absolutely, and we think that's one of the, probably the most underutilized things about the diagnostic lab is everybody sees the report that goes back to you, right? Um, but we, we sit on a huge amount of information and data that things like just what you said, we see thousands of cases a year. And so somebody that sees one over here and one over here, well, we can start to put that information together and say, hey, we think there might be a trend here, something's developing. So yeah, it really helps us. And again, back to getting people just submit samples, you know, that makes our pile of information even more powerful. And, and we're really here to protect 
the agriculture in the state of Kansas too, Dan. So we, we think it's kind of an underutilized service. Awesome. Well, folks, let's get some samples in. Thanks to Dr. Lubers for being here. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember to find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with that local practitioner from Dr. Brian Lubers and myself. Thanks for watching Doc Talk, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.